Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to the backyard podcast. <laughs> uh, hey listeners, uh, hey watchers. Um, this is, uh, I think, the fourth episode on video that's actually done now with my own camera. Uh, the first one with this camera. Mm. It's been a while since I recorded an episode in English. Thanks for the practice. <laughs> Um, and uh, today I am in Kordi, was it? Kordi village, yeah. Yes, um, I came to visit an old uh, colleague from Olde um who decided to come to the countryside and start a farm life, I guess. <laughs> Or more of a homesteading thing, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a that's a word I'm not really familiar with as well. Is there a is there a, a word for that in Estonia? Esto- Estonian? Uh, I'm not sure. It's it's all talu, talu uh-huh. vitamina is uh-huh. it's probably the same. But uh, I think the main difference is a farm would be like farming, and then therefore maybe more more of a business thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But homesteading is just providing for yourself mm-hmm. well i guess the thing is that in estonia as well or like in estonia our culture farming used to be kind of homesteading or like mm-hmm. mostly homesteading so when people say farm in estonia this is what they mean kind of or yeah. like this is what we get the picture of uh but i guess in like australia or or, or the states if you say a farm people see these like a, a thousand at least a thousand hectare big like production uh, monoculture factory kind of uh, uh, place so okay so homesteading it's a it's a it's a small uh, growing uh, growing animals growing plants growing your own food Mm -hmm. taking care of the land for your own sake for for their lifestyle I guess yeah and uh, creating a surplus and creating a better soil and mm-hmm. and all that but yeah in for basically for our own needs and creating mm-hmm. a um where possible an income as well from the land mm-hmm. so uh growing a little bit surplus was mostly mostly mm-hmm. just providing for our own needs mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. get it uh, covered so we don't need so much output or input from outside mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like a aut- autonomic yeah autonomic <laughs> way of living i guess that plus community uh, not self sufficiency but mm-hmm. community sufficiency mm-hmm. so uh yeah also with trade of with neighbors and um mm-hmm. and uh both in like work energy but also in in goods and mm-hmm. in services yeah mm-hmm. let's introduce you to as well jakob evelyn yeah yep uh, jack. Demo. <laughs> <We're> jack. <laughs> which one is jack the bigger one right uh, Bibi and uh, Sassy. Ah, uh, Sassy? Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Sassy is the German Shepherd and Bibi is the Jack Russell. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We used to have a, a shepherd uh, back in uh, the countryside in Otap as well. Mm. Yeah, I grew up with him. Uh, yeah. yeah, so how is it living with the animals and with nature? <laughs> So far, nice. it's two years you've been doing that, right? Yeah, well, it's been two very hectic years of like partly living on our land and partly not sleeping on it. Well, living on it, but not sleeping on it. It's just we're, we restored an old log house and mm-hmm. and we were really nearby at our neighbor's uh, extra house. Uh, we could use that as our stay. But yeah, we had pretty much animals from the start. Mm. Yeah, that that was one uh, <laughs> a little bit like crazy or uh, mysterious part for me. Like you didn't even have a home here, but you still uh, decided to take animals and take care yeah. of them from the start. Yeah, it was more of a, like this. This land has uh, old 1850 built uh, longhouse, uh, Rehielamu, mm-hmm. which was kind of in in a condition that needed a lot of input. And we didn't really have the resources, so. We decided to renovate the uh, smaller sauna house first, although it was like more work in that sense because the mm-hmm. the state of the logs and everything was worse than the, the big one. But you know, and we didn't really want to put a lot of effort in 
like in the in the long house mm -hmm. and then build uh, the sauna house but mm -hmm. we just like decided to go with the sauna house and we had the opportunity to to uh sort of be in another house nearby so mm -hmm. uh, it was like most effort to go in the in the animals and then and restoring that old log house and then mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah we had that nice opportunity to mm -hmm. to live <laughs> yeah. in another house and not be building in our home which would have been really hard mm -hmm. And building or restoring an old house is is really stressful, you know. Mm -hmm. Some people say you, you should go camping with the, your really? your boyfriend or your partner before uh -huh. you <laughs> decide anything. Uh, well, house building is something in that order, but then you know multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, so the animals are actually a great way for us to like sort of like uh, get sort of uh, down to earth, mm -hmm. and they really like. Uh, take the stress out of us mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh yeah and and we just you know it's just part of the picture and mm -hmm. if your neighbor has lambs then you're like well, let's get cheap <laughs> <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. so uh yeah we started with chickens and then uh some sheep mm -hmm. and now we have rabbits mm -hmm. i think every time something bad happens with the house like oh we found out that the old limestone chimney needed to come down for example then it's like Okay, we don't really want to think about it now. Let's focus our attention building rabbit coops. <laughs> oh, have you heard about rabbits? They're really great for homesteading. And then we look videos, lots of videos, <laughs> lots of information, try to figure out the best way for us. Mm -hmm. And then we build two rabbit tractors and mm -hmm. two, uh, and, and a big like uh, indoor stay for them. Mm -hmm. And then we got rabbits. So yeah, it was another month later <laughs> when we got back to the house. <laughs> and we sort of need sort of like... <laughs> positive energy again to, uh -huh. to tackle uh, yeah some, it's, some it's really hard it is like way more more hard than just building a house it's mm -hmm. just taking someone old like someone else's old house down mm -hmm. it's just not taking the house down it's also taking stuff out and cleaning it and then mm -hmm. you know there's so much old stuff that you need to remove and then mm -hmm. like stripping the house and doing that and this is all like for like artsy people like we are uh, is like really like emotionally like draining it's mm -hmm. just like we like creating stuff but it's mm -hmm. like destroying mm -hmm. stuff first and like oh it's really hard mm -hmm. it was like way better when the, all the house was stripped down and then it's like okay now we're building it up mm -hmm. and, you know, that was mm -hmm. that yeah. was way like more motivating to do that than, uh, and also you know like if you start something from from the scratch you 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 can do it by measure. You can do it by uh, uh, neighbors. Oh, <laughs> neighbor. <Our> neighbors. Neighbors. <laughs> uh, oh, I think we got that on the video as well. That's cool. <laughs> uh, That's how we life. get rumors starting in the village. Yeah. <laughs> it's like uh, what are they doing there with those lamps? <laughs> <laughs> Talking into a lamp. Crazy people. Is that people. a new thing? <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, starting something from the scratch is that uh, you can really do it by the measure and like use maths and use geometry doing it. But I guess when you're renovating an old house, it's already like taken the shape of the ground and already moved by the by the winds and seasons. And then you really have to do everything by hand. You can use you cannot use like measurements or like load. How is that? Uh, water level. Yeah, or like or level. spirit level, whatever it's. Yeah. 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 And so, so it's way more work. Yeah. Yeah. But there's nothing like. There's no ninety. Straight. There's no <laughs> ninety degrees things, mm -hmm. and, and it's no even, lines. Even more fun in in the house now when there's like stuff that we made, uh, uh -huh. like spirit leveled everything straight, and then you look uh -huh. at the old beams, or like, <laughs> and then you look at the thing, it's like. How is that possible? It's very confusing. Like which <laughs> which which thing is the straight one? Because everything. Is like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I fun. guess in the in the in the end, it's it's probably more fun to live in a house like that. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. life. It has character. Yeah. Yeah. It, it has also, character also all this history. You know, it's, it's it was also a, like a big decision for us. Or it wasn't really in that sense that we always knew that we we're gonna those people who are gonna reuse as much as possible this mm. sauna house was really like <sighs> sane people would have taken it down and built a new one you know <laughs> but uh because i had some log house experts also came to mm -hmm. to like say what they think about it and it was just on the edge of 
like more than 30 percent of it was like shit oh. mm-hmm. so it's like need to replace all that so it's down it's the question should you restore or should mm-hmm. you scrap it and do a new one and we decided to the restore and like later going into the taking the things mm-hmm. part it revealed that there was more problems so it's uh-huh. like i don't know 50 percent of the house was shit for i don't know what it was but mm-hmm. so yeah it was a lot of work but uh and we did it mostly just two of us we had mm. help here and there but like it's a real challenge for a relationship as well. It's like mm-hmm. <laughs> I said that I think two years ago to April. Like, if we get this house done and we're still like not hating each other, <laughs> that would be like a really good thing, you know. <laughs> oh, no. yeah, Made you stronger. Yeah, yeah. It was like it's been hard at times, but it's like a lot of fighting. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's good that we sort of got through this. And now mm-hmm. it's like just. Now we can express ourselves. Now it's the sort of making the inside of the house nice and mm-hmm. doing the artsy stuff. So it's now it's like, yay. I think we must tell the listeners that we've only moved in not even a week. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so finally, so we're still living a bit boxy. Like, and yesterday we finished the loft and... Yeah, yeah. we're but still building in the house that we're living in. But, you know, we so at least cool. we we did all the ceiling. No hot water. Yeah. yeah, ceiling parts, the plastering, the ceiling, and everything we did before we moved in, because it would be a horror story to cover everything up when you're living in there. So like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> still a lot to do, <laughs> but it's fun. But where did the uh, like decision for your for for you come from? Like, did you have this lifestyle when you were little, or or where? What or who dis- inspired you to move in the middle of nowhere and and start your own homesteading project? You know, I think for Evelyn there's a lot of reasons and it's a long story. But me, for <laughs> me, it's more of a I just wanted to get out of a system as as much as possible. Mm-hmm. I don't really believe in the off grid thing. Mm-hmm. Well, like I can live off grid if if needed. I can live in a forest and survive, but like. For how long? For some mm-hmm. time, not mm-hmm. forever, but not in the winter probably. Mm-hmm. But like, there's ways still to, to survive in the winter. But uh, I've l- liked a lot of like going outdoors and camping and being in the forest alone for longer periods of time, and I like that. And I was just fed up with the city life thing, mm-hmm. and I was fed up uh, of paying rents and paying electricity bills. Or oh, we still do that, but like. Mm-hmm. Like ridiculous electricity mm-hmm. bills for like lighting the garages of the house somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's like and like all of this, you get paid and then you just throw it all away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I had a like idea of I want to go and build myself a little hut somewhere <laughs> and mm-hmm. and then live there very minimal and uh, and produce as much as. Yeah. our own food and, mm-hmm. and things as, as possible so uh, yeah and then I had a really um, like a goal set to build a straw bale house mm-hmm. so I I knew Sven who's the big straw bale builder mm-hmm. who's now our neighbor mm-hmm. uh, I went to see him and he had a course so I went okay I'll go on his course so I'll know a little bit more about it so and is this how you found the land as well? This is n- well, no, not exactly, but the uh, the the guy who was selling this land was selling it already there. But at at this course, we we uh, met with Evelyn, actually, mm-hmm. which is also weird. But uh, yeah, the the group actually in the course came to look at this house with Sven, but Evelyn was doing something else and she wasn't. She didn't come here, and I went to the dentist or something in Tallinn in in the middle of the course. So I didn't also see this place, yeah. and uh, yeah, we were looking the whole summer for, for for a, like a farmstead place and and land, and didn't find anything really that like spoke, mm-hmm. uh, spoke with us. And uh, yeah, I came to visit one winter, Sven here to just get away from the city, and I was having mm-hmm. a talk that like ah, I was looking for all these places, but there's nothing that really. And it's like, oh, there's still this neighbors selling there. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, well, check it out. And I checked it out and it was like, oh, there's a lot of old buildings. And it's <laughs> a lot of work, you know, because mm-hmm. I was looking for land, not buildings. And then mm-hmm. I like something stayed in the back of the head. 
is the place of the, the old trees and and things like that you know the feel of a place and then i came back the next day to check it again with a different sort of view and mm-hmm. and i was like hmm actually you know <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then yeah later uh, e- evelyn also came and and sort of felt it and yeah mm-hmm. so we ended up uh, buying land it was a few hundred meters from where we first met so that was a weird story it's a longer story than that but it's it's just the weird part of it is that we're <laughs> like now neighbors of sven and and uh Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and living so close to where we first met so it's very weird that's magic right there <laughs> yeah no strawberry house yet though because uh-huh. we had it all <laughs> long log houses <laughs> to fix first so uh-huh. but it's still a plan to uh, build a bigger From house scratch. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but yeah let's finish that one first mm-hmm. well what's your story Evelyn <laughs> um, how did you come to Estonia <laughs> Yeah, how long is this podcast going for? <laughs> yeah, how long? Yeah, how many days? <laughs> this is a campfire story. Um, no, I can, I'll try to keep it short. I just had the, like the regular sort of upbringing. I come from the Netherlands, mm-hmm. and um, in a um, in a town, not like a big city, but like proper town, and um, and yeah, I did um like university um degree in um first psychology then environmental sciences then mm. uh forest and nature conservation masters and um at the end of the my masters i sort of got into uh contact with permaculture mm-hmm. and i was very interested in that and uh, for my um um internship i did a design the food forest mm-hmm. for a, a care facility in holland people with special needs and uh and that was really interesting and that like you know that taught me a lot mm-hmm. um and uh after that i decided to travel for a, a year in new zealand and uh with a special focus on uh, like visiting places where people do permaculture or food forestry mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. uh natural building mm-hmm. also is that uh, popular in new zealand um maybe not popular more than anywhere else but mm-hmm. um it just came to my path and I always mm-hmm. wanted to go to New Zealand so and there was actually a 20 year old food forest at the time so it mustn't be now 20 what is it seven maybe mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know there were a few places that I uh, for sure wanted to visit mm-hmm. and so I volunteered around for a year uh, both North and South Island and I got in contact with lots of really interesting and inspiring people mm-hmm. and um, and also did my built up from there yeah and I did my permaculture course and also, I like I realized how many versions of permaculture, you know, are there. It's not just one thing. It's really, uh, yes, please. Um, you know, you work with what you have and your situation, basically, mm-hmm. right? So that's uh, it's really location dependent. So I also got really into like natural building, and I helped a few earth builders out, straw builders, and uh, adobe brick builders, and. Um, and um, so people also on my on my journey asked me, oh, so kind of what kind of house will you build later? I said, well, it depends, <laughs> we'll it depends where I end up. I have no idea where uh-huh. I'll end up. And uh, so if I'll end up with a place with a lot of sand, will be sandbags, and otherwise might be clay, might be cob, might be straw mm-hmm. build, might be, you know, it depends. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so I came back from New Zealand with a lot of like inspiration and hands-on experience. Mm-hmm. So I tried, but there was absolutely no way that I would fit back in this n- Dutch. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of like city life, city <laughs> life, and cultures and expectations of family and friends. Mm-hmm. You know, you got a master's degree, and now you're off living this hippie life. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. um, so I've never actually officially used my degree in, like, you know, in um, in a real job in that sense. You know, mm-hmm. but uh, of course, I've, I've taken uh, a lot of information from it. But uh, yeah, how did I end up here? I don't know, I guess I was searching then when I was came back a lot, like what made me happy and what not, because I fell a bit in a sort of a depression almost mm-hmm. because I didn't know what now, you know, mm-hmm. coming mm-hmm. from such a great experience and... Uh, no direction. Yeah, directionless and everything that I thought I knew I didn't anymore, you know. I learned about like 
dairy and how bad it is and like <laughs> bread is bad and everything is bad. You know? Oi. Cheers. Sorry, that was the dogs. <laughs> Did someone come to visit? Oh, the wrong direction then. Mm. Probably some animals. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I went to uh, do some back to volunteering basically mm -hmm. uh, with uh, permaculture people, mm -hmm. <laughs> and there I met some some new people, some new connections, and I went to volunteer through the UK that summer, and got to really inspiring places, and then I got back in contact with Richard Perkins, mm -hmm. the guy who's in Sweden mm -hmm. farming, and um, because I had already been there on a course previously. And uh, I decided to apply there and I did like, um, they brought me to Sweden. Um, I did a core, what is it, core crew sort of apprenticeship on mm -hmm. his uh, farm, Richdale. And uh, yeah, it was really interesting and I, I learned a lot. And uh, it also just learned me what I didn't want, mm -hmm. <laughs> which mm -hmm. is also very valuable. valuable. Mm -hmm. And uh, Is he someone who you would like recommend to check out if people might get some like interest or, 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 or questions into like permaculture or homesteading? Um, yeah, I mean uh, Richard is very much about uh, making small farms mm -hmm. work but with a like a real clear like business perspective mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you can make it economically viable mm -hmm. um, so if you are interested in that you can check out like uh, Richdale Permaculture mm -hmm. or Richard Perkins there's lots of stuff uh, on YouTube Mm -hmm. and uh, very interesting um, information about like rotational grazing how to not overgraze your land uh, building up soil uh, using chickens and uh, sheep and uh, pigs and um, cow systems mm -hmm. to um, yeah to uh, improve the soil while also <coughs> building a, an income <laughs> sexy I don't know <laughs> yeah and um yeah and that got me back actually also into uh into natural building mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and uh yeah and from that place i uh, i came to estonia <laughs> to be honest to from um sweden. yeah from sweden yeah i was on a place where yeah. um <coughs> there was lots of uh natural building courses but they didn't like have any experts there they mm -hmm. would hire experts and then they would have a course and they would end up with the building and uh, the experts would get paid by the participants, sort mm -hmm. of like that. Mm -hmm. And um, I also taught a course there in, uh, in pizza ovens. It was my first course to teach. To and, uh, build a pizza oven. To build, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. a rocket pizza oven, actually. Rocket stove. Rocket stove pizza Shut oven. Shut up. From, from Cobb, double uh -huh. chamber thing. Pretty All cool. All right. <laughs> Are you going to do one here? Uh, yeah, at it's some wrong. point. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> You, that is so cool. Come, yeah? oh, <laughs> I'm sold already. I uh, that's the, the best pizza I've ever had was in uh, in uh, Italy. In um, uh, there's a little, not little. Well, I don't know. <laughs> there's a there's a lake uh, near uh, near uh, Milan called mm. Comos. Okay. Uh, and 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 it's just really 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 beautiful place. Uh, like all the houses built next to each other, like on the both sides of the lake. Uh, very like uh, idyllic uh, uh, scenery, and and uh, and there was a restaurant that was looked less like a restaurant and more like someone's home. You just like got invited in, and then they had a really really nice uh, wooden uh, pizza oven there too, and the best pizza I ever had. More, I'm, I'm usually more interested in like American pizza, but but that was really it had something to it. So yes. Yes. <laughs> if if you're gonna build a pizza oven here, or if you're gonna teach people how to build a pizza oven, so yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. All right. Yeah. But there in Sweden, you you found someone who was building uh, or like teaching uh, nature natural building here. Um, not quite. I I had already picked. I did a course in Tadalakt, uh, this Moroccan lime plaster. Mm -hmm. uh, waterproof uh, lime plaster, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew how to do that, but I hadn't done it like I'd done a, one or two projects, small projects, but not like a proper shower. 
Mm -hmm. So that place gave me the opportunity to build this shower mm -hmm. that likes all around like a hammam. Like mm -hmm. it's round, it's curvy, it's just one piece basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that was real cool. And mm -hmm. uh, it was, um, they also had a little straw bale house that was uh, built in a course, but it was unfinished. Mm -hmm. So one of my like wishes was to find a place that uh, I could uh, be and experiment a lot of, with these natural building skills that I would picked up and seen, seen and read about mm -hmm. just to really do it right and um, uh, without having like financial worries mm -hmm. about it you know that you also have to pay rent and you take this and that and also have a job or whatever mm -hmm. so we figured out how we could do that and uh, mm -hmm. I, I lived there for well eventually two years but initially one year uh, with the deal that I would do up this house and mm -hmm. uh, there was a little like stipend and some money and so I didn't you know I didn't have to worry mm -hmm. <laughs> about mm -hmm. money I could just do mm -hmm. and, and play around with the mud and the clay and uh, and everything and uh, and uh, yeah and end up also setting up a little company for myself teaching tidal acts and some natural building stuff mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um and uh, she the lady who I was with there she was also quite organizing people and uh, very eco-friendly and um, sh yeah there was this uh, program called Nord, Nord Plus um, mm -hmm. and uh, Nord Plus was organizing with partners an exchange between Lithuania, Sweden and Estonia mm -hmm. and thus uh, Sweden and Lithuania came to Sweden first mm -hmm. and we did all kinds of cool things mm -hmm. <laughs> and built like a round wood um, uh, roof above the pizza oven and we worked with clay and we worked with stone and mm -hmm. we worked with a Swedish uh, traditional fencing called Jeskort mm -hmm. and um, yeah so it was very uh, cool course and uh, it's always fun to have uh, people from all around being mm -hmm. interested in something you know mm -hmm. so and uh, building with your hands yeah like doing pra very practical things mm -hmm. and uh, it's just a lot of fun so um, that was a great success and then later and then next year uh, we were going to Estonia. Mm -hmm. So then I arrived with the Swedish group um, at Svens. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. also there we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then I uh, I hang out for, for a bit more because I was going to go to the Eco Village conference that was in, oh, uh, in Estonia. Le Lila Ro? Yes, Lila, Lila Ro. <laughs> I can't say it, still can't say it. <laughs> uh, and so we decided to hang out and he showed me Estonia for a week. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, basically, not really left each other ever since. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, then we... Yeah, we a few times were like, I was in Sweden and yeah. you were here. and Hopped around a bit. Mm -hmm. And we went to Northern Ireland and, and oh, yeah. uh, Holland and... I tried to start community there with those people, but mm -hmm. it wasn't really our thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's funny how you like intend things and then it takes the universe a while, but then it comes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I always had this vision of okay you know as I, I said before to you like in New Zealand I also saw a lot of communities mm -hmm. and uh, I figured out like the people thinking too easy about it is mm -hmm. a, a reason that it fails often and mm -hmm. it's often the people part mm -hmm. that makes it fail you know the social dynamics the, mm -hmm. the politics mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. uh, one place uh, in uh, south of Estonia uh, which I visited uh, that's doing like a community school oh. uh, Sanna Kulturi Moisif, you mm -hmm. know, they're a really cool project. Uh, they also told us uh, when I was this, uh, like, how do you say in English, blue eyed, uh, very naive, like, oh yeah, let's do community life. Yeah. They, they, they you like trees, right? I uh, like trees, <laughs> we can start a community. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they yeah. said that, uh, yeah, the community is like a karma, karmic pot, you know, it's uh, if you if you start a community, like, it will bring all of your shit out and do it like very fast and then very intensely so you better watch out for that yeah. it's 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 a it's a real big work yeah i guess yeah. and people it with is. people yeah just imagine like how long you take to decide on a partner mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. like community is living with 10, Ten partners, partners or more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh -huh. and everyone has their quirkiness but anyway that's a different story but yeah mm -hmm. uh, my intention was to like okay if i'm gonna because I, I really like the idea of like of community um if it's gonna work then i i want people that uh that really have something to bring they have experience in mm -hmm. in um something. what it takes mm -hmm. 
and they have like ideas about it and they are not underestimating it. They all have something to to uh, bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I do natural building, they might be doing social uh, gathering or, or I don't know, uh, yoga teacher or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. that we all can sort of like um, give some courses and synergetically also mm -hmm. uh, work together not mm -hmm. just like oh mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah i'm just here mm -hmm. <laughs> you tell so, me what to do so not just hippies you know uh let's see if this is up so not just hippies you know who just want to live easy or like do nothing mm. uh nor nor people who are maybe like too individualistic that yeah you know want everything to be done their way right mm. so yeah. you got to be able to do both to be someone or like yeah, yeah. Do you have your thing, and at the same time, know how to work with other people or like to be a part of a team? Yeah, and also realize that it actually takes a lot of time and effort mm -hmm. and vulnerability from yourself to mm -hmm. really properly communicate, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that there are tactics for this and that mm -hmm. there are ways and. Uh, it involves a lot of meetings and a lot mm -hmm. of like uh, opening up and mm -hmm. discovering things of yourself you don't mm -hmm. even know probably mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, to be it? able to go into this process uh, and uh, wanting to do that so yeah actually I found those people mm -hmm. to do this with and we had just barely met like three months maybe or something mm -hmm. so I was really like okay I want to try this you know mm -hmm. and we were this the idea was that we would meet up with this group of people and uh, see where we, yeah, if we liked each other, if we, you know, if we were a match in that sense. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Jakob joined me mm -hmm. in the, that adventure to see if he was also part of this match. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were not, <laughs> or he was not. Oh. Oh, yeah, I knew that from the beginning, but I gave it a try, basically. Like, uh -huh. Okay, you know. Well, Jakob, you probably have some like uh, reference to it uh, with your like band activities. Like, you know, when you make a band, you also have exactly, to have this yeah, chemistry. I, I had a lot of bands. And, like uh, one time, I had six bands in, in the same <laughs> time, and it is like a big family. Uh -huh. It is really hard to get a group of people working together for a longer period of time mm -hmm. to be like All so that everybody is happy and, and, mm -hmm. and satisfied. It's just like hard work, yeah, in a sense. So yeah, I don't. I've never believed in let's all live in the same house and be happy. Mm -hmm. It's like it's gonna blow <laughs> at some point. Someone's gonna like. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I was like, okay, but it made sense because what these guys were doing, they were like um, people from with different backgrounds, but they they had the. A lot of them, I think, two or three of them had a background of living in a community. Oh, yeah, One yeah. was even. Uh, Jake was, was born in a community. Mm, he was born in Fintorn, one of the oldest. Whoa, really? Yeah, yeah and, and then this, yeah. this like the the knowledge behind it and the, the like what what do you call this sociocracy and and mm -hmm. um, nonviolent nonviolent yeah. communication. All these like like knowledge of about these sort of. There's a lot of traffic today. Yeah. <laughs> Sunday. Sunday. Everyone yeah, was going like, to the church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're finding it, doing rounds. Yeah. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? <laughs> Nature church. Maybe yeah. we should start that. Build one from Willow. Uh, Estonian church is the forest. Uh, <laughs> don't have much of that here either. It's mostly fields. <laughs> but yeah, they the group of people was very conscious. It was not a bunch of random hippies mm -hmm. going, mm -hmm. yeah, let's do it mm -hmm. it was like a lot of conscious people who are educated and, and had experience so in that sense it was like okay mm -hmm. might you know okay could give it a try let's see mm -hmm. how it feels like but you know um yeah it's, it's that's not for me i'm i'm with my mindset of a community is like having good neighbors around basically <laughs> and doing <laughs> doing something together mm -hmm. that is my like mm -hmm. vision of uh that's workable uh-huh well that for estonian that's even quite like uh social <laughs> social yeah no. exactly you know most of us we don't even speak with our neighbors yeah. like in my home mm. i don't know uh, yes the, the most we do is like wave to each other when we drive by but that's that's pretty much all we do mm -hmm. hmm. yeah we want to also get more of this community here together with with this m2 we just created Mm -hmm. Also, like to bring 
the local, not just only from this village, but from villages around. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, how do you say it in English? Uh, sort of connect? Bind and connect people yeah. and have them sort of want to hang out with each other and do something mm -hmm. useful, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. sharing and knowledge. projects and, and... Yeah, like sharing knowledge and, and building a community in that sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. more of a in a community in a, a well, not broader meaning than just living together. It's mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. people with the same core values, basically. And, and, and then trying to get these values to have some output. sort of output of, of yeah, like um, practical, help me out. <laughs> what, what's, what? what? Help me out, what's my dream? <laughs> no, it's what? again. No, I guess uh, what the MTU is mostly like about is connection. Connection with, um, with nature, mm -hmm. connection with self, Mm -hmm. where you're at and connection between each other mm -hmm. so um and that is in our um, like a little group as we would have a course we mm -hmm. would focus on that but also to bring the neighbors all together mm -hmm. and talk and mm -hmm. you know so we can be resilient mm -hmm. in 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 many different ways uh and also the the bigger um surrounding so like esna and the, and the surrounding villages mm -hmm. and um and yeah that can be in a in a practical way maybe we, we produce something maybe not um this is all uh you know it's um i don't know it's it's always a bit tricky to i think it's dangerous to work mm -hmm. like financially and with french mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. and finan mm -hmm. finances mm -hmm. it's really uh, tricky sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so um maybe we should try to keep it in the like you know feel good mood <laughs> S mm -hmm. stages more than like uh, let's make a big profit or something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know but who knows there's also i think one of the most important goals is to get more people understanding the the need to conserve nature and like like uh, like to educate people to understand why we need to stop doing the the monoculture stuff in in farming and and also like not clear cutting all the forests and like how to manage things in a way that it's still profitable but in a smart way and in a way that we don't destroy the the cause what what is it down there the ecosystems well ecosystems yeah but the like the different species and varieties of things biodiversity Div yeah diversity, diversity. biodiversity mm. so we don't mess these things up because you know it's just the understanding of how to and why and then also how to use the things you have mm -hmm. and also there's so many like this is this is a no-brainer there's so much uh, uh, like a, let's say a free hectare of forest can give you uh, mm -hmm. like Okay, you can just look at it that way. We just cut it all down, mm -hmm. and that's a good profit, you know. But you, if you manage it smartly, you could get like three, four, five times the, the money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like maybe in a longer period of time, but then it, then it will be continuous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. but it's basically the same sort of thinking as, as a food forest in that sense of like you're you're farming. Mm -hmm. uh, vertically vertically yeah you have more kind of things in the area it's 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 packed mm -hmm. together so it's it's creates more shade and the, some mm -hmm. things don't grow so fast and don't produce so much but you have so many Variety. varieties of things that in the end you Get more. gain more yeah mm -hmm. from the same thing and 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 then you also create uh, more wildlife life habitat and, and mm -hmm. all this and then this gain 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also like how it affects our own psyche and yeah, our own absolutely. mental health and uh, <laughs> i had one talk with um in Trekvainu. i don't know uh, mm -hmm. i'm gonna uh, make a uh, one more podcast with him actually hopefully next week um he's he's been helping out with the uh, movement against clear cutting in estonia and and really a nature person as well uh and uh, talking with him, I had this <laughs> this idea that 
you know Estonia has quite many like startups and like these um, mm, like innovations per capita uh, I was thinking that maybe it's because we have so many forests you know because nature or nature around us uh, because it really inspires us like if you go if you have your chance to go take your forest walks or go pick your mushrooms or berries mm-hmm. you you know it's it's not only energetically that you get to like uh, invigorate yourself you I, I think nature also really in, like inspires or, or gives you the room to get that inspiration to do your big big next thing or get through a difficult period in your life so so yeah one one is the real physical uh, one thing is the real, this physical uh, mm, fruits you get from the forest but mm. but the other thing is also what fruits you get uh, psychologically or, or spiritually or, or mentally from from these diverse systems as well because like you described mm-hmm. uh getting fed up with the city life i guess this is this is something that like untold numbers of us feel like in in even bigger cities or like in big metropoles you know just these concrete jungles this is just a take 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 circle just mm-hmm. in a loop of just taking resources and just consuming mm-hmm. shit you don't really need and mm-hmm. not creating everything anything really mm-hmm. so it's uh yeah, and consuming each other as well, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, last year before I switched the uh, mindset, oh, like when I decided that's it, I'm going. <laughs> like, I'm mm-hmm. gonna sell all the stuff I have, sort of, and, and go away. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I felt really the need the year before that decision, also, like, I felt the need to go away mm-hmm. as I had more went to the forest alone more than than I usually do mm-hmm. and uh, it was like came back to the city and, and unpacked my camping gear and I was like <laughs> okay where do I go next like let, let's pack it again and you know uh-huh. restock and mm-hmm. <laughs> leave mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I was it's really agitated with the city thing mm-hmm. and, um to close up the last uh, topic like about uh, community life um, I think uh, Jakob you said uh, you said before when we were talking around uh, uh, walking around and talking <laughs> talking around, <laughs> walking, talking around <laughs> uh, you said that uh, yeah you didn't just want to put the effort of like having a three at least a three hour meetup every Monday uh, to have the uh, community thing work out you know to uh, because it takes effort to keep it uh, running mm. I guess yeah. Yeah, we, we even have this I haven't seen it myself but we have this uh, movie Heart Circle about the community in uh, in Marjama which oh. is precisely mm. about that you know like them doing doing heart circles and and, uh, and um, which is also I guess like really great experience for growth Mm. for like personally uh, but uh, one one guy who was working in our farm uh, when we started uh, he also said that they were getting a little bit too many of these hard circles and he wanted to do more with hands and you know pr- uh, create more rather than uh, invest all of your energy into these social dynamics mm-hmm. which are also really important because if don'ts don't work those social dynamics then the practical mm-hmm. also don't work mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. the little fight you have are not really about the color of the fence they're really about that other thing that hasn't mm-hmm. been resolved yet mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so those circles are very needed the closer people live together they the more they are needed i guess but yeah some people will always feel that the, we need more of them and others will always feel we need way less of them mm-hmm. <laughs> and this mm-hmm. is where the shoe uh, i don't know is this an english uh, expression in dutch eh? where the shoe it gets tight where it's mm-hmm. too tight you know mm-hmm. where it's uh, mm-hmm. not good mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah i don't know if you want to say what you wanted to say about it but mm-hmm. that's what I <laughs> yeah no about. i just wanted to kind of wrap it up the community mm. part so this is why you i guess decided to come and live on your own and rather like build your community the way you want to with with, with more like uh over a more vast uh field I guess, than than living in one house and 
having yeah. to deal with each other every day. Well, I think there's a lot of different ways of communities mm. and how, you know, you don't always have to live in one house, some kind of like a community house or, and you don't mm. always, you know, there's not one way of doing a community. There's many, many, uh, but often it's some sort of a shared land thing and many m- people are financially invested mm-hmm. and this makes it also uh, more difficult to maybe enter and to leave. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, especially after our Ireland experience, mm-hmm. I really thought, okay, it's either this, well, before I already, I had like, okay, it's either this community with really knowledgeable mm-hmm. people and we make really synergy synergistically mm-hmm. <laughs> synergistically is that a word yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. uh plays with really cool um like courses and uh, we can really make it work we do a lot of these circles and we have a lot of mm-hmm. self-development and blah blah uh, <laughs> <laughs> or mm-hmm. or everyone has their own little uh place they can decide for themselves where to plant the potatoes and uh <laughs> And we come together when we want. And mm-hmm. maybe we have businesses that sort of like link up mm-hmm. by themselves. They mm-hmm. synergetically improve each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we sometimes have some some working together or not. And if we need a bit more space, then we need a bit more space and it's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And uh, then on, at the Yanni path, uh, everything will uh, <laughs> work itself out again <laughs> if you have a bit of a struggle. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you mind sharing? Uh, put this. Do you mind sharing uh, what, like, mm, what was that drove you away from Ireland? Uh, just it's everything Northern together, Ireland, or actually. Yeah. <coughs> it's not but about yeah. the place even. But no, no, <laughs> it's. Or well, I didn't really feel. I didn't really feel that I. W- would like to do that and for me it's it's i'm really tied to my roots sort of anyway mm-hmm. so for me like even thinking about moving away from estonia is like a, a drastic thing and um <laughs> yeah i guess i've been i've traveled and i've worked a bit uh, in the uk as well but it's like i've been away from estonia and it always like I can't be away for too long. It's, it's really um, something draws me back here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. They were g- g- nice people, but uh, yeah, I think that idea was to build a community somewhere in Portugal or something. Potentially like. Portugal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like moving away one thing, and then there's like the living sort of together thing, which is not really mm-hmm. for me. I'm typical Estonian. <laughs> Let me be in peace in my own backyard. <laughs> <laughs> when I want to socialize, then I, <laughs> you know. Go to church. <laughs> go to church, go to, go to the forest. <laughs> Nowadays you need to plant your own, because there's... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> plant it today and enjoy it in 40 years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can plant one for your children mm-hmm. or their grandchildren. But that's also, uh, I would say, uh, a, a sort of um, psychological thing that uh, it's a sort of a need. If you go into psychology, it's just like a Maslow's pyramid of needs sort of thing. Because like when you don't have the basic needs met, then you're not going to be thinking philosophical philosophically yeah. about who, what should I do, and hmm, I should really plant some trees for my unborn grandchildren mm-hmm. you know you're not going to get into the thinking of mm-hmm. oh hmm, that's a good idea of mm-hmm. like doing something better for the world mm-hmm. or something you, mm-hmm. you're not going to get there when you don't have the, f- the first things yeah food and shelter and then you know you're not in fear all, all the time mm-hmm. um, that also comes to the community living thing in my view that uh, you can't really have a good community with anyone if those all of those people aren't in a good state of mind, uh, mm-hmm. like like uh, um, sort of organized in their own brain and like in a way free in their thinking and like have dealt with their like childhood traumas and all mm-hmm. that shit and work with their with themselves and mm-hmm. done all that and then educated themselves and then like 
then maybe something might work out but you know mm-hmm. it's well there's also has to be like a binding factor like uh, well all these communities i've seen they they all have some kind of a strong like a binding factor is mm-hmm. it like a more spiritual or religious thing or 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 is it like financial thing or or, or is it the land or or like family relations or something there mm-hmm. has to be something that holds them those people together as well Un- unless uh, or, or 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 otherwise you're gonna have a the, the first storm is gonna blow you over you know mm. i guess yeah yeah i think that's one of the sort of like rules or if you so mm. say like either there is some like religion thing behind this and uh, and that's your like mm-hmm. umbrella why mm-hmm. are we doing this or there is like uh there should be in a way there should be some kind of uh a goal that we mm-hmm. are all striving for mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. it's like uh, f- uh, making this land uh, a beautiful place to live in for now and for future generations mm-hmm. to come or like you know something along those lines that we say okay we mm-hmm. don't agree today mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but at least we can agree that we are like something. you know working on our goal on mm-hmm. our long-term goal and and you need something that like sort of um helps you overcome this today's mm-hmm. struggle to look mm-hmm. for tomorrow again yeah it's mostly probably would be a good m- motivation is the kids it's like a bunch of people who think like ah we want our kids to grow up in a nice environment and also get education that is you know better mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. and nice and whatever and so i think that's a would be a pretty thriving factor well that's something that was definitely a mod- motivation uh, or motivational force uh, in the community i was working in as well uh, well let's say farm it's still more of a farm than our mm. community right now uh, uh, also yeah getting making a nice environment for your children yeah they they're also planning to build a school mm-hmm. they have uh, they have the house already for that and yeah well education is also a big huge topic uh huge let's say pain spot in the world i would say mm-hmm. yeah to to really be teaching the things you need to live uh, either than uh, than just uh, uh propagandize or 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 make them into some living slaves living robots in the in the cogs in the system mm. yeah we teach children how to like remember facts or whatever mm. what is a fact anyway i mean <laughs> or you know history is written by the ones that um that won mm. and um uh but we, we don't teach children how to resolve a conflict in a proper way how to make a ethical decision how to you know all these more like uh soft subjects in a way mm-hmm. we just re- mm-hmm. remember we teach them to remember something that happened in the past or mm-hmm. is not really mm-hmm. applicable and uh, we don't teach them how to sort of find peace within themselves or mm-hmm. how to sort of quiet down and listen <coughs> how to be mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't yeah so i think there's a we we yeah we train them to uh, not think for mm-hmm. themselves we train mm-hmm. them to shut up and listen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. from the first oh, moment right. when you put them in a classroom mm-hmm. right i'm very interested in this uh what is it it's called again unlearning not no unlearning no. yeah something like that was it uh there's this school of thought there's of course homeschooling mm-hmm. where sort of the parents um take the role of the teacher and say okay we're going to do two hours of math today mm-hmm. or in the, then we're t- two th- hours of language or whatever or they do it in a free flow style, but there's still some kind of a s- structure or schedule and they play school. Um, whereas unschooling, I think it's called unschooling, is where you totally trust the child. Mm-hmm. You totally trust that it it learns whatever it needs to learn when it wants to learn it. Mm-hmm. And so up to like a, yeah, four years or whatever, uh, in, in Holland then they start going to school, they're learning so much mm-hmm. you know they're learning by oh colors and and picking up things and counting and mm-hmm. and all of a sudden 
they would stop learning and now they can only learn by sitting still and listening mm-hmm. to someone telling them shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, with that school of thought, you, um, um, you really trust that the child, it, you just let it be, basically. You let it be like before it goes to school. You let it just play around. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It learns by play. Mm-hmm. And when it's time to uh, build the treehouse, Mm-hmm. It will learn about gravity, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it mm-hmm. will learn about how to use a hammer mm-hmm. and uh, how many na- nails it would need, mm-hmm. and you know things like that, and what is strong and what is not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will. Mm-hmm. That is a mm-hmm. that is one school of thought. Mm-hmm. I see Jakob looking at like we're not doing that. That's way too hippie. <laughs> 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 yeah, if it might work out with like, you know, as everything, some. Some kids are way more, uh, they, they're faster than others and they are more curious than others and things like It might work with some, I think. Uh, but some aren't really curious about anything, so they're... I don't know. I don't know if that's true. Uh, maybe in a city environment where you live in an apartment and being left alone, there's only the telly or the game sta- play station, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then you're not like um well, stimulated enough mm-hmm. but in a setting like this in the country life there's trees to climb there's birds to watch there's ants to uh, observe there's mm-hmm. <laughs> all kinds of things that you know children can play with anything mm-hmm. or as we see rural children play with anything mm-hmm. city children need their equipment mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they've been deafened in mm-hmm. a way mm-hmm. i think uh oh, it's uh, imagination's taken away basically Mm-hmm. Yeah, because mm-hmm. everything is put into a little movie or a thing, and here, eat it, you know, mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas here, you need to make your own little story about the princess in the living in the comfrey flower, and mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. <gasps> yeah. Anyway, that's just uh, sidetracking, mm-hmm. <laughs> unschooling, and uh, as you said that. Yeah, well, that's that's uh, that's uh, a question we need to answer as well. Like, mm. if we if we want to, how how we want to, where we want to direct our future. Um, uh, yeah. So. I think the only, well, there's a lot of good examples of schooling as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, like well, in big scale, it's like Finland is one of them, I, I would think. Mm-hmm. As, uh, but I think if you take the education system and like, let's say, the, I don't really like to use that term, but like, holist- make it holistic, make it whole, so you better like teach kids, like, the how. I would say more of the, let's do some tests and more of like, let's blow things up in the physics class thing kind of works, because then you make relations f- from the, like the information that you get in mm-hmm. and like you can apply it and see it and like feel it or or touch it whatever and then if you understand the process then you learn something if it's just information you just okay mm-hmm. i have to do the test mm-hmm. and then you remember the numbers and then you write it down it's done and then it's like whew, mm-hmm. okay i can forget about it now yeah, this is time. totally useless and then when you take the physics and chemistry and, and, and um whatever it is, philosophy and, and like, and then nature, like, mm-hmm. just whatever mm-hmm. it is called in English, the nature. Biology. Uh, uh, biology, yeah, sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, biology classes. Um, uh, and you, like, teach the kids how to um, understand the connections between the mushrooms and the fungi and, and mm-hmm. the trees and, mm-hmm. and, and the animals and this mm-hmm. and that and there's that there that is chemistry that is mm-hmm. physics all of that they mm-hmm. lead to kind of sort of bind this information together to understand something then you can understand the ecosystem yeah, it's and if you understand an ecosystem it. then you will look at the world in go different outside, way go into the nature I, I i i think it's like it's crazy that you have to learn biology from a book from pictures or in a classroom. Well, it's in a way it's, it makes sense because you can't take all of the things and like find them now. It's like one of those, oh, let's go um, look at, at some birds. 
Mm. It's called bird, what's the word? bird watching. Mm. It's like, okay, we today the class needs to see a you know a woodpecker. Okay, let's find one. I was like, oh, there's none around. It's like, okay, it's easier to just <laughs> flip to page 52. Here's a, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, but like, no, people should understand the whole thing, how it works, not just this is a formula for this and, and this is that and this is math and it's like mm-hmm. totally use, mm-hmm. useless uh, mm-hmm. fragmental mm-hmm. knowledge mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. what do you do with that mm-hmm. nothing mm-hmm. yeah it's really hard to remember that too and then you have people who really go into one section of that like the, mm-hmm. you go into biology mm-hmm. and then you specialize and then you get all to your doctor's degree on that and then you have phys- mm-hmm. physics people going to that and then you have mm-hmm. mathematicians go to that and then they're all very wise professors and then, then they come together and then they still don't understand how those things are related to each other mm-hmm. and they're going to be arguing with each other no i have loads of data that shows that we should be doing this and then the other goes no we have loads of data that shows this and mm-hmm. blah blah and this is mm-hmm. what's mm-hmm. the point it's like because they don't understand the connections between things and i think this mm-hmm. is very important to uh, teach people the connections mm-hmm. between mm-hmm. things because this yeah, yeah. is where it gets interesting and to realize that we don't also know. no we don't know <laughs> shit <laughs> mm-hmm. but that's it's more interesting because like evelyn is also going into this is more interested in going deeper into this the the soil bacteria and like into knowledge soil of food web so food, yeah. yeah food web thing is to understand what's going on under our feet and how to change that and mm-hmm. like to there's you know you can talk about that yeah. but um uh, yeah I, yeah this is there's so much we don't know and this there's and at the moment there's like more and more science like confirming things uh, what what we're doing with the the conventional agriculture things and how we're destroying things and why like if you understand this stuff then you can really easily well i don't know if it's easy but it would be probably cheaper to uh, maintain a big farm without any pesticides and fungicides and and, and uh, all sorts of sprays and things because if you oh we need oh this is a problem of that oh let's kill that mm-hmm. oh mm-hmm. now we don't have those birds anymore oh shit now we have some other maggots that are eating because the birds are not eating you know mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. whole countries that have gone through this idiotic let's mm-hmm. kill it thing and then they mm-hmm. you know like what where was it in china or somewhere where they had to buy in critters from somewhere else like mm-hmm, buy mm-hmm. in little insects mm-hmm. from other parts of mm-hmm. or pollinate with your hands yeah it's like oh we killed all the bees so oh, okay who's oh shit you know it's like mm-hmm. you kill one thing and then it's mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. it's basic ecology is like what most people are lacking that's the thing <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. understanding of the food chain and like this is really like not kindergarten stuff but it's like really like basic stuff it's like but you can go into researching some chemical stuff so deeply that you forget about the simple thing Mm. sort of i don't know (laughs) but uh where was i going with this anyway oh basically so food web yeah it's understanding things is is why why aren't these plants working with some soils it's not thriving it's it's mm-hmm. a problem we need to add what or we need to remove what and why what's the what's the point of it you know it's like as far as i understand a little bit of something you've talked about is like some plants like more fungal connections some plants like more bacterial mm-hmm. like life Mm-hmm. and if you know you might be thinking you know if you don't know which plants like what and like mm-hmm. all the connection between things you might be thinking oh we should like put all these you know you can go in permaculture oh like all the compost teas and like put this merry like mm-hmm. good compost and a lot of bacteria and then you put it onto a plant that doesn't like that you put mm-hmm. it on like that like some fungal Mm-hmm. Uh, some symbiosis things mm-hmm. uh, and then you basically kill your plant with the goodness mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. just because mm-hmm. you don't understand mm-hmm. what it needs so it's like we need to look 
deeper and understand mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. But well, this is, this is a really good uh, introduction to permaculture, I guess. Overall. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On to you. I don't know. I don't know anything. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picking up some little. Well, I I understand a bit of ecology, but it's mm-hmm. just scratching the surface of. No, but these are some like clear explanations of uh, what we are doing wrong and uh, possible solutions as well. In 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 our f- everyday, you know, production. So in 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 our society right now. Mm-hmm. So, did you have uh, like a like an education? Uh, in in oh, you see, you said you had a little bit of education in permaculture. Yeah, I did my. Um, uh, PDC mm-hmm. uh, online actually by Jeff Lawton. Mm-hmm. So Jeff Lawton is one of like the bigger um, guys who made it like um, more famous in the world. Mm-hmm. He studied under Bill Mollison, who was the founding father. And um, um, yeah, what can I say? What do you want to know? <laughs> oh, I know it's a big topic. Uh, yeah. Well. Well, let's thing, let's let's keep it <laughs> more local then. Like how how have you how have you applied it here, or 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 what do you see is the like first uh, I don't know output or 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 use or or yeah, let's say use for it. Mm. Um, I think permaculture is mostly like a, a vision of of a way of life mm-hmm. because it's based on ethics mm-hmm. you know and um, um, a lot of principles mm-hmm. like um, um, oh let's say something um, slow and, and small solutions you know mm-hmm. you observe first see mm-hmm. what nature does by itself mm-hmm. to repair something or to observe oh this is a new open patch what comes up first mm-hmm. you know things like that um oh here's where we last year put uh, quite a lot of um, um compost that wasn't ready yet or um uh, a lot of manure load mm-hmm. high manure load oh there's a lot of um um nettles now you know that that might be related mm-hmm. you know so i think permaculture is for one a lot about observation mm-hmm. and trying not to intervene too quickly mm-hmm. you want first to observe the system by itself mm-hmm. where does water naturally pool up on your land it's probably where there's some clay in there mm-hmm. can we is it uh, wanted there or can we sort of lead it to the side so mm-hmm. we can dig it out a little bit if there's still clay or can we line it with clay so that we then uh, use gravity to uh, feed our gardens. Mm-hmm. Is it high enough in the landscape to feed the gardens? Do we have the possibility to catch water from a higher terrain mm-hmm. and lead it down with swills or not swills, depending on the situation, um, into this pond, which will be a source of life. Will This will create a different habitat because it is war- uh, wetter sorry, mm-hmm. during the season, whether if it dries out or not, mm-hmm. it will be a different uh, ecosystem, a different uh, microclimate. Mm-hmm. which will attract different species which will make the the your whole dynamic more interesting you mm-hmm. know your whole ecosystem will become more interesting because it's more complex mm-hmm. um but it's also about what working with what you have and mm-hmm. you know not trying to put your plan from your head mm-hmm. not so much to the land but also let it come to you from the land mm-hmm. you know um, so not think too much already, like I- in your office, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> in mm-hmm. a way. But let's go paper. out and 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 see what is there and how can we use that. Those nuts from the tree, those acorns, uh, we could eat them. It's a lot of work. Do we want to be putting that work in? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. Can we feed them to the pigs? Shall we then pick them up and and put them to the pigs, or can the pigs come here? Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, when also there's like. Um, um running your pigs or livestock underneath the fruit uh trees when the first sort of like um uh the small apples have fallen um yeah the ones that sort of in a storm or the that the tree sheds that they're not going to fully ripen mm-hmm. you know 
if you leave them, it might get like uh, these insects in them that will uh, put their eggs in the ground mm -hmm. and they, they feed on the fruit and they infect the fruit and then the fruit drops and it, uh, they go into the ground and the cycle repeats mm -hmm. for next year. But if the livestock can actually break that cycle mm -hmm. while feasting on this, this beautiful fruit, mm -hmm. so pigs or, or sheep, and um, and uh, I don't know who said it, but like they say, like if you if you remove a pig from the system, then you will have the pig's job mm. to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so if you don't do it, then you'll probably get pests next year, next mm -hmm. year, next year. But mm -hmm. if you put the animal in at the right place at the right time, mm -hmm. then the animals has a plus and the fruit trees have a plus and mm -hmm. you don't have to do the work, which is a plus. So I think, um, yeah, um, for me, permaculture is very much about um, the whole system. So not just about a, uh, an oven, like pizza oven, Oven, or it's not about a natural house it's not about a herb spiral mm -hmm. it's not about a swale or a dam sorry um it's about what fits in your landscape in your situation mm -hmm. your context where do you want to go and how can we get there without like um harming nature in that sense mm -hmm. or doing too much inputs mm -hmm. uh, but still getting the results and outputs that we want mm -hmm. and um um, in so that yeah. way it compares uh, for me it compares to like wisdom you know there's like uh, I don't remember the author of that but there's like four ways of knowing uh, which build up on each other first is like data you know just random facts that you can observe uh, the uh, all right or, uh, so the first one is actually just uh, let's say data like something you've observed the second one is knowledge you know, if someone confirms it that, okay, this is the case, you know, it repeats, this is some kind of a process. The third one is a skill, if you can, like, uh, use this process or you can intervene or you can create it or you can some some way, like, uh, rebuild it. Uh, so you get a skill. And the last one is, like, wisdom is, like, where to use this skill mm. or what to do with this skill and when to use it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's uh, it's nice, yeah. So, yeah, for me, it's where things grip into each other. You mm -hmm. know, we uh, we just redid our house then, and we are both really clear that we don't want a um, water closet. You know, we don't want a toilet with water. Mm -hmm. We want a composting toilet. Mm -hmm. It takes a little bit more work, mm -hmm. basically, to take it out, but it makes so much more sense mm -hmm. <laughs> to me. Uh, we keep our resources on the land and we let we put it back into the ground and feed our plants mm -hmm. instead of um, yeah defecating in our drinking water mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. like running 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 low why would we do that mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me uh, so that we can like reuse put back into the gardens and let it feed us again but then it stinks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it doesn't really. That's also a thing. It doesn't. Because mm -hmm. that's the problem of of separating the urine and mm -hmm. the feces. Then it doesn't stink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have these, basically, who doesn't know yet? This mm -hmm. is, there's these... Um, you can buy them yeah. or you can do it yourself. Yeah, it's a separator. So basically, if you sit down, the, the first hole takes the pee and then goes... And... Uh, and uh, the fatter stuff is separated, and then that fatter stuff doesn't stink so much. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's also a good topic we bring up sometimes when people are oh, telling me that, oh, this composting, oh, it's stinky and yucky business. Well, we usually have this lovely place here. There's cherry trees, and we have a coffee and a cake, and we're actually like <laughs> five meters away <laughs> from our human ear pile. This mm -hmm. is our human ear pile. Oh. This is our shit. <laughs> That's our shit yeah. right there. And <laughs> I've never heard anyone complaining Complain. about smell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really lovely here. Oh, except the manure that the animals sheep, sheep yeah, <laughs> leave here. But that's I know. If it looks bad or smells bad, cover it until it doesn't. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the rule. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually you don't really need to that much. If it's just sawdust with it and mm -hmm. it doesn't. Yeah. Well, the really what uh, 
uh, a little revelation I had uh, a while ago when you started speaking about uh, permaculture was you said that uh, the central point is really about, or let's say the foundation is really about ethics, mm. about ethical uh, behavior and, and, and I guess this for me, like as I've studied also humanities and psychology, if I go deep enough, it also comes back, always comes back to religion, like why we are doing what we are doing or what we could be doing. Uh, this is like, it was really, really, really cool connection for me to see that. Because in permaculture, I also see the future. I see that this is like sustainable or this is where we should be heading or or or, or what is good, what, what, what I should be studying as well. Uh, so there's uh, that, that connection was kind of of cool to see that it, it 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 always comes back to your heart in a way mm. to 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 behave right and then then this will produce the right fruit as well um i'm not a i'm not a christian or, or anything but uh, there was a really cool line in uh, in bible about this that you will uh, uh, how was it in english like uh, judge tree by the fruit it gives if it gives good fruit, it's a good tree. If it gives bad fruit, it's a bad tree. So it's the it's it's the same about all the like ecological effects we are having on the planet. Uh, the the not good ones that show us that hey, this is this is the wrong thing we're doing. And then it all oh, and funnily enough or like comically enough, it comes back to comes back to your toilet. Like <laughs> what are you doing there? Job. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but this this expands like it, into everything, into every factory, into every business, into every project we take. But yeah, there's so much other like it's the, the like the water closet thing, the, like using drinking water to flush down your shit. Mm -hmm. Is it's not only just using that pure water, and and it's also that brings a lot of stuff into the system of uh, the water system, basically into. Oh, yeah. Groundwater into our seas and lakes and whatever. Uh, all the, the drugs people are using, the medication, mm -hmm. I mean, and like, well, also drugs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, birth control what, they, what they did, what they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Birth, birth control, meds, everything. COVID as well. They were testing these, like, how, how bad is the situation by testing the, the sewer waters, basically, mm. of how much. Uh, Antibodies, or I don't know what they were looking for, but they were like they were like clearly testing how is the situation going by mm -hmm. just taking some samples from the water that goes, you know, it's like, and a lot lot of these things they go through the filtering systems and blah 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 blah, blah but they still are there and they're affecting mm -hmm. our mm, what is the expression marit marital life marital yeah aquatic water. well there are waterways basically yeah. it's like uh, seas or mm -hmm. rivers mm -hmm. and and that mm -hmm. affects all the animals and and, and the fish that oh, yeah, and, and, and so oh well, yeah mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all mm. comes back it all comes <laughs> back <laughs> no, it's, mm. yeah it's the good and the bad fruit tree thing mm -hmm. uh, it's just like yeah we should uh, the, the problem i was also see is the people who are put in charge of something, it doesn't matter if it's our wastewater system or it's, it's a politician doing this or, or the forest situation or the, the agriculture ministry, whatever, they're like, they choose a path because no one really knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they choose a path and then it's a really human psychology thing. It's like when you choose a path and you've decided that that's what I'm going to do and this is the right mm -hmm. thing and then I'm right because I know I'm doing it for the better good and, and maybe, maybe you have invested 20 years of your life in it yeah exactly and then you have to, to yeah you have mm -hmm. to convince yourself mm -hmm. all the time that this is the right thing to do because if you're doing the wrong thing then you're an idiot so mm -hmm. and you're doing the right thing and then you have to convince everybody else that you're doing the right thing and then you're like blocking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the other information that's saying otherwise and then you kind of end up um defending your point of view and, and no mm -hmm. this is the right we no because no because and no mm -hmm. because and then you back it with data and blah blah, blah. it's all with this data stuff you can you can do so many studies on the same thing mm -hmm. from different perspective and it mm -hmm. shows different results and so it's like what's the point but yeah, yeah. where is it where are we going I'm, i don't know where am i going but the <laughs> point is this um uh 
they're so like you need to be humble i think mm-hmm. and 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 just admit that you don't know and mm-hmm. admit mistakes i think there's a lot of i see this as a problem of nobody really admitting their mistakes mm-hmm. and there's no one that takes the responsibility of especially politicians don't mm-hmm. take any responsibility mm-hmm. for the things that have been done and uh, yeah for forest stuff going on right now even like the why can't we not log for a few months mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you know it's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. why it was like it was just killing a lot of birds just mm-hmm. by taking forest down it's like why can't we not oh but then because the big machine goes and oh well the f- the forest machines and the harvesters need to be going because we took big bank loans on them so mm-hmm. so they have to be working 24 7 otherwise we cannot pay them back it's like mm-hmm. yeah but yet that's your stupid decision isn't mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. W- why would we why do we have why, to like why w- are all all mm-hmm. of our uh what is it uh, c- not convenience but all of our life quality needs to mm-hmm. go down because mm-hmm. you took a shit loan on a harvester mm-hmm. yeah so that's mm-hmm. a good example i think that that would be a decision based on money mm-hmm. principles whereas mm-hmm. the ethic would say let the birds nest mm-hmm. the, the best quality of timber is anyway in the winter <laughs> when there's no sap <laughs> when there's sap, no sap, sap yeah. in it so basically mm-hmm. it's very old knowledge you take mm-hmm. the tree down when it's winter time when it's when it's cold mm-hmm. and when there's a shit winter and it's not proper cold you don't take the tree down well mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. i understand the the the, um, the world right now it can't really stop because of mm-hmm. the, all the consuming <laughs> we're doing is well, like it's a little bit more complicated when you're having like a of course, a logging business, only logging. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's, in my opinion, so important that we diversify. Mm-hmm. That you, if you have a bit of forest and you have some animals and you have a food forest, you know, mm-hmm. if, the, if, the, if it is a bad winter and you can't harvest and you can't sow any firewood, maybe, you can, uh, maybe your th- sheep are thriving, mm-hmm. you know, or your apples, it's a really bad fruit year. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, mm-hmm. something else will do really well mm-hmm. you don't put all your eggs in one basket mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. that's how we've been doing it yeah. like the last mm-hmm. 50 100 years and that's Everyone how nature does it as well. but it's not mm-hmm. how nature mm-hmm. is is doing things nature is everything you know mm-hmm. this is also mm-hmm. like a monoculture in that sense yeah. forestry mm-hmm. is it's like, monoculture yeah. it's monoculture everywhere it's just oh, the same thing <laughs> why do, why doesn't why don't they well let's like, like give an example of why don't rmk just go and pay the same group of low well this it is a low um, salary based people who just like well get to get a bunch of people and then well harvester drivers have to be educated but like mm-hmm. like still there's a lot of people who are getting paid really shit money mm-hmm. and there's a lot of them and they're doing something it's like okay why don't we take those people and let them uh, pick some berries mm-hmm. for a month you know when or mushrooms or whatever and take the same stuff from the forest mm-hmm. and sell that mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. instead of importing some mushrooms from mm-hmm. wherever then you know best, the wood best into, yeah, best, yeah. into the other side of europe for uh, no, we're selling our ovens. good like that's a shit thing we're selling our good old logs and shredding them into like mm-hmm. like, like we're not even like there's paper trees like small mm-hmm. trees that are Made, made uh, well, like go into the paper industry and things like that. And but in a lot of cases now, meeting some demands, either it's a EU demand or some like uh, supply demand thing mm-hmm. uh, of like someone. Oh, we need to give so much timber out for let's say this thing. And now we're like, oh, we're not meeting that demand. So we're now taking good wood. Mm-hmm. old wood that could be like a quality wood that could be used for something way better and we can get more money out of that we're taking this wood we're shredding it mm-hmm. making it into mm-hmm. pellets and selling it to uh, mm-hmm. denmark so they can on paper in you be uh, green. environmentally green mm-hmm. uh, gr- they're they're using green stuff we're like we're just shredding our forest so they mm-hmm. could be green it's like it's also the same bullshit because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. You have to look. We're living on the same mm-hmm. dome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's same Denmark or here. It's the like cosmos. they can't go. Oh well, that was green, but mm-hmm. they lost their forest because we were green. It's like mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. we're, we're living in the same place. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this kind of mentality. There's a lot of greenwashing and there's a lot of mm -hmm. bullshit going on. It's all business. I understand the business part of it. Mm -hmm. Let's make money, but let's... Ah, mm -hmm. it's philosophical. It goes really deep into. It's one of those topics. How can you talk about this topic? Because it goes into everything. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we end up like, well, because somebody had a shitty childhood and they don't care. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have a circle to share it in. Yeah. No they heart circle. Yes, they didn't have a proper neighbor to go to the forest to, uh, with and play. They were mm -hmm. teased and then they're all grumpy and, and want more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, it is also like the complexity of our situation, you know. It's like really hard to get to understand any one thing and then like to have to understand everything and, uh, and to... Um, manage like a big picture or a big ecosystem i guess this is too much for anyone absolutely yeah but it's like wh what are we doing we don't know mm -hmm. it, like in 50 years it might be like oh those idiots in the past they went with this permaculture thing mm -hmm. and they really got it going and then they mm -hmm. destroyed earth you know mm -hmm. i don't know it might be like a really bad thing we don't know we might go really in the wrong directions with some things mm -hmm. But I think we would need to try to do something. It's like I, I also see the forestry problems and, and the agriculture problems, and I see myself like really caring about this. And at the same time, I'm like I've I don't really feel like going and fighting and, mm -hmm. and yelling mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. making my point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to some other idiot, you know. Yeah, well, that rarely makes it better. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, yeah. okay, what can I do then? It's like, oh, maybe just let's try to give a good example of how things can be mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. done, and that's also partly the point of why we started at M2. It's just like in the future, try to mm -hmm. show something, and hopefully get some um, reg bigger agriculture uh, companies also involved and mm -hmm. do like bigger test patches of mm -hmm. how to mm -hmm. do this this way how to do yeah, that if you could, if you could uh, prove the uh, econom uh, economical uh, or, or like yeah like if let's say economical um, uh, viability viability or, or even like a, like surplus but uh, oh gosh I'm losing words already like uh, if you could prove it's economically also better to do it this way, mm -hmm. then I guess you could get some real traction also. Well, that's the point, because this is like there's some guys in the US and uh, I bet elsewhere as well, but like one in particular, like is a big ag mm -hmm. and is doing in big scale farming. Mm -hmm. uh, also, like no pesticide, no herbicide, no spraying, all like ecologically and diversifying and is he says like he's what's his dude's name is also Gabe Brown this farmer I think so I he's think uh, this was Gabe Brown I think he's a regenerative uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. agriculture guy oh he has the, the same principle of the diverse of everything not just mm -hmm. monoculture but like a lot of stuff so if something fails you'll also be doing money and and his like point is he's teaching the other farmers also it's like you will gain so much money as a mm -hmm. farmer mm -hmm. if you don't need to buy all the pesticides and all the the yeah, big machines well the big machines still do there's there's the plow there's the no dig method still like what half plow or what do you call those things the key lime plow key oh, yeah. lime but plow. it's not always needed it's only mm. Mm. needed a few times it's mostly for decompaction it mm. sort of rips the soil but it doesn't like turn it over which mm -hmm. is a big thing because mm -hmm. yeah. you don't want to disturb all those mycelia these uh, fungal threads in the bot in the soil because mm -hmm. they are very important mm -hmm. uh, but we're killing them because mm -hmm. they're disturbing you know <laughs> our <laughs> yields well it's it's, it's another <laughs> world but this is like um to to show in big scale that it works without spraying this stuff mm -hmm. so you don't have to buy this stuff mm -hmm. so you can use uh, organic fertilizers and and mm -hmm. just diverse things and and let the basically the nature do its thing and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just collect what you want mm -hmm. and um yeah it makes like business-wise it makes sense mm -hmm. 
you just need to but it's it's really control. hard to make that sort of switch from mm -hmm. well yet again i don't know maybe it works there maybe it doesn't here for some reason that mm -hmm. that, that interests me that's that's why i would like to also get to have some talks with some big ag mm -hmm. people in estonia to try t to do some mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. uh, and test test mm -hmm. it out if it's possible and how and it's just big science and also like collaborate with universities and, and uh, labs and things like that um which will be very interesting yeah because we've got this uh we're gonna get this neighbor land uh what he's been doing um Plowing conventional conventional uh methods we can find out for how long but um that will be in our hands soon mm -hmm. and we can hopefully we can get like our hands on a micro what is this called a microscope microscope yeah. to uh do some analysis or get mm -hmm. some help from someone who can actually see all the little mm -hmm. bitsy bops uh and how how <laughs> see how 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 dead it is or mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. and how how long it will take for us to improve that mm -hmm. because i think what's important to mention is not just saying to the farmer you know oh you shouldn't be spraying or forcing them not to spray is not the way i think it's really valuable to see that there's really good numbers coming from uh, from america where um not only do they not uh, spray they don't have the inputs of the herbicides fungicides and insecticides they don't have to like also have the time and the gasoline to s go out and spray that they're not killing all the uh, obviously then the insect life and the and the fertilizers <laughs> and fertilizers well, also at least in estonia mostly they're using shit they're spraying shit around which is better than chemical fertilizers. Oh shit! Mm. Shit, shit, you mean? Shit, shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know if it was shit. <laughs> it was, you know, a general term for shit. Some crap. For uh, yeah, <laughs> literal shit. They're spraying literal shit around. Yeah. Uh, wait, but I was it's losing my thread now. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> with your shit, you and your shit. Um, that you don't have to kill all the. Yeah, well, the that's not only do you not have the costs of the 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 chemical inputs but also they arrive at better yields mm -hmm. stronger plants and then you can sell it as organic w which, which now creates goes more at a premium and hopefully yeah. will just be normal later yeah mm -hmm. so what if i can tell a farmer if we do this and this it might take a few years like i'm not taking like 10 years i'm talking more like three years mm -hmm. we can give better yields stronger plants healthier more nutritious for the consumer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we're not killing all the bees mm -hmm. and we're not killing all this uh, other creepy crawlies mm -hmm. that we need mm -hmm. and you get better money and you get better money and you don't need to put buy all this um, um, uh, fertilizers and, and all that stuff that comes with it mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be a great sales talk? I mean, who can? Yeah, that, that that might do for that's the thing a good sales point for a farmer that's uh, really, like, in a, in a sense is a, is a rich farmer of he actually owns his own land mm -hmm. and he actually doesn't get money. He's like, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, Self-sustained. Self-sustained. Yeah, because mm -hmm. a lot of farmers are r renting the land mm -hmm. from someone else, and they're getting subsidized by Bria and, and all sorts of things. Like, and there there's rules, and then mm -hmm. like they set the rules. So it's, a, it's you shouldn't be really talking to the farmer. You should be talking to the anchors. The, the, mm -hmm. No, the entities that are like the agricultural, whatever you call them, uh, that decide who give out the subsidies to the farmers and decide you need to now. So this mm -hmm. then and mm -hmm. and spray that and spray this and spray that. Mm -hmm. But also probably these entities are also like lobbied by a lot of uh, chemical mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. industrial Producers. companies. You know, mm -hmm. it's like it's a really hard cycle to. Mm -hmm. Break. You know, it's you can't just go like take money out of someone else's pocket who's like. But mm -hmm. they're. Not doing the right thing. Yeah, They're who cares? Everything. It's it's business, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to. You sort of have to sort of look at it with this mindset of, yeah, it is well, a business. Someone's going to be really pissed off mm -hmm. that you just made a lot of money for this farmer, but mm -hmm. someone's losing their empty share. pockets and he's going to come for you. Oh. So it's just like a another cycle of mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think <laughs> we have to end, go through. 
I think in the end, I uh, hope I can only be hopeful. Mm-hmm. You know that uh, it it can it can be done, and we will make the switch. And I would love mm-hmm. Estonia to be one of the first to to reach that. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. to be the first in Europe to really go really green. Yeah, green well, green. we have the let's say the scale is kind of like uh, uh, nice for that. Uh, we are small enough, but we are big enough. We have enough nature hopefully so in the future as well still intact and we can experiment here and we have a lot of tech yeah and we have a lot of bright heads so Mm -hmm. a lot of startups can like very quickly i think make it like well it's what it's the word tech savvy stuff like we can integrate all the Mm -hmm. tech Mm -hmm. with the knowledge of this and make it like Mm -hmm. um how to say is like um, a small smaller input in that sense if you have Mm-hmm. machines t- and the faster shift yeah do it quickly yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah yeah well that that well we lost the picture anyway um yeah. so we can wrap up um <laughs> one thing i was thinking to balance all this uh uh let's say apocalyptic uh, situation <laughs> we are in <laughs> uh, is that uh, uh we are also kind of like uh just waking up as a species you know to our effects and to our powers and to our uh not solutions but uh potential Mm. i guess this has only been like a few hundred years we have been industrially like uh, producing uh and 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 having this power so uh i guess what happened or what has happened is that we just needed to quickly adapt to our population and and then these new crazy powers that we have uh, achieved and to really like lift every person out of poverty or out of this survival mode which we have quite achieved right now and i guess un uh, uh projected that we might like lift pretty much everyone out of poverty by 2035 or something like that if we continue with the pace right now uh, so we have like you also said that we have the capacity to philosophize or to mm-hmm. to start thinking about the bigger picture like when we don't have to worry about where we get our food tomorrow to get out of this fear uh, and now that this has happened and is happening then we can start impl- implementing these new ideas and then start really joining these different fields of thinking and 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 expertise and special specializations and professions together like you know i don't know bring uh, bring these uh, businessmen and bring these bankers and bring these scientists and and actually people people actually working on the land with the land together and see what we can do together mm. Uh, this is my hope for the future at least (laughs) this is uh, what helps me sleep at night Mm -hmm. (laughs) i think uh, keeping things small scale is a Mm -hmm. big key Mm -hmm. everything that grows bigger and bigger Mm -hmm. and bigger creates more problems and more problems well that's cancer in human body if if there's something that just keeps growing without any regulation or without any um like co-working or 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 synergetics uh that's that's cancer pretty much so so it's it's been really great to see that uh to see you and to see people around me more and more like moving back to the countryside and starting work more locally more with their hands um also building communities and then living with together with nature and and more like ethically or or more according to their heart or or souls <laughs> maybe that's one like last question i could ask you as well is like how has these two years been on you what are the effects on you tough <laughs> <laughs> physically tough for sure oh physically yeah. and mentally more i think but yeah, it's mostly i think been the constant building and and like for me building isn't the thing i like i like to do i don't like like building houses and make like artsy 
artsy stuff when <laughs> expressing put a drum in your hands and you'll be happy <laughs> yeah. give him some sticks so he can <laughs> ram some <laughs> give him a rhythm <laughs> yeah I was like yeah I'm not, I'm quite happy now because you're uh, out of that horrible stage of building but um, you're very much out of your comfort zone I think yeah exactly Yes. Which is can be good, but for too long and too mm-hmm. far out, it's mm-hmm. draining. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it still adapt, adapt, ad- adapting stage. Yeah, it was is the harshest part was like I don't know how to do these things, and then you mm-hmm. like step out and of your comfort zone exactly, and then you kind of learn and go get advice from people who know, and then you have to decide on something, and then you try to get your shit together, and then okay let's try this and then you do that and then you do the one process and you see it's like oh yeah i've done something and then like okay what's the next step next step is that i was like how to do that ah uh, i don't know and it's all over <laughs> again and then all over again and it's like every step is like totally like uh, uh-huh. it is fun in a way but like i've learned a lot but like it's also like yeah uh it would be nice if it's on a slower pace mm-hmm of uh, yeah it was like a lot of time pressure on and doing things that I have no idea how to do them so it's yeah it was but but we did those things exactly yeah <laughs> so how did has it made you grow as a person of course also lost a lot of my nerve endings <laughs> <laughs> which m- might not be a bad idea think uh, maybe. maybe i grew some new ones that are better <laughs> i destroyed the old ones that were th- they were not needed anymore. They're not needed <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. any advice for uh, people uh, thinking about moving to the countryside starting a homesteading project absolutely do it but uh, think it through Mm-hmm. be realistic mm-hmm. and yeah this is one of those things we, like I wanted in the beginning of uh, let's just focus on the house and and do that and then when the house is ready then like focus on the animals mm-hmm. and Aif was like no. no let's take some animals right now and then it grew out of hand of like and then it was stressful because we needed to build more stuff for the animals and, and mm-hmm. do and learn about more of that and this and that and and that created more stress because oh, we've not done nothing on the house. And but in a way, it was uh, a really good thing to have animals because they've helped helped us go through this sort of lows mm-hmm. and and sort of ground us in these these uh, dark like times <laughs> when you're like so fed up with all this building nonsense and this and that and then there's oh let's cuddle some sheep you know <laughs> and, uh, literally yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah sheep are really nice mm-hmm. when you get to know them you know mm-hmm. when you, you keep them somewhere on the fields far away then you know they don't know you and you don't know them but if you yeah if you work with them every day if, like if you move them every day like we do also this you you know they trust you and and you trust them and it's yeah they're like pets basically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. bigger dogs mm-hmm. yeah exactly when i saw you moving them before they ran after you exactly like dogs you know <laughs> <laughs> they don't go fetch the ball but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah the cute. animals have have helped mm-hmm. so i don't know if so if what are you have. saying get a get a rabbit so, so you can no rabbits are not really like <laughs> rabbits are they're cute and all that, but they're like they're they're quiet. They don't they don't tell you anything. Mm-hmm. They're quiet animals. You need to be like observing them if you want to know if there's something if there's something matter mm-hmm. the matter with them or like, if they don't runs tell out you. Of water and yeah, they, they, they will, will tell you. you they, they will scream at you <laughs> when they need something. When they're out of food, they'll scream at you. When they're out of water, they'll scream at you and things like that. But like a rabbit wouldn't. It would just die in silence. <laughs> uh, so a rabbit in that sense is a bit of a more complicated animal. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's also a very easy animal to, to, to tell you. <laughs> it's, it depends how you want to look at it. Mm. But yeah, I think sheep give more back. Chickens are also quite fun. Mm-hmm. but uh yeah i like sheep 
<laughs> what yeah. about you, Eve? Um, what was the question again? The first one was like, uh, how how has this two years worked for you? Ah. Uh, uh, well, it's been really interesting because for me, like during my volunteering um, years, basically, and traveling years, I've picked up lots of like little skills of homesteading, like here and there. Um, and gardening wise, you know, I planted onions here and I harvested potatoes there. And mm -hmm. it's like, because you're always on the move, you never finish a season. Mm -hmm. properly some mm -hmm. at some place so you don't really see how things mm -hmm. evolve over time so here when i got here we also started gardens and uh yeah i was quite well settled on the on the natural building side of things mm -hmm. and i had my like uh, feet properly in the ground there i think but uh gardening wise i was pretty new mm -hmm. so uh that was a really nice uh, learning curve there and uh, really from start to finish and um yeah here's like a place where i can put all my sort of dreams and and uh, things in practice into practice uh which is really cool mm -hmm. and now yeah we're starting the silver pastoral um stuff so yeah trees trees and animal system integrating uh which is really exciting and mm -hmm. um doing more food forest plants mm -hmm. and um yeah, starting a little nursery for specialized food forest plants mm -hmm. that work in Estonia. And uh, the hunt for them <laughs> is a journey by themselves, you know, to get them, get seeds and, and stuff mm -hmm. from all over. Mm -hmm. It's uh, quite cool. But uh, yeah, the house building is, is taking a bit of a toll on our relationship, I'd say. But uh, I think we're, we're getting out of it. And uh, I mean, we're still here and we're still smiling. At each other, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's not always easy. Mm -hmm. But I guess that's life, you know. Nothing mm -hmm. is always easy. Mm -hmm. It will make you stronger. Yeah, yeah, I would say like I wouldn't think that a lot of people we will, will, will or would be in that position when they when they do what we do, because uh, I think a lot of women wouldn't be doing the things you do, meaning the like. also building and and like. I would think that most, in most cases, couples would be like the man's building and the woman's doing the other stuff or gardening and thing. But like, you don't really see a lot of couples like doing building together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. But like now we know why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really hard. This is also like pe different people are like have different logics on yeah, how to approach yeah. things, mm -hmm. and this makes really hard. It's like I see this like uh, we should approach this like this, and she's like total opposite, and then we have to like fight over it for two hours to get even to start on something. That we actually mean the same thing. Yeah, we mean the same <laughs> thing, <laughs> but I was just talking from the other end. You know. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. Well, I experienced that on the farm too. It's like. Yeah, every every person has their own logic or way of thinking. Uh, so then to fit these two together or this to decide which one to go with is 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 can be like most of the project, you know, or like take take most of the time. Yeah, this is also this like in a lot of a lot of cases there's there's people who are like more dominant over the other people. Mm -hmm. other person so they will be like oh is this my way we're gonna do it like this and the other one says oh okay i don't want to fight mm -hmm. but like with us i think we're both really strong characters mm -hmm. so we will fight mm -hmm. through this <laughs> it's like no i have I'm this point give up. i'm <laughs> right and then Ave's gonna be like no i'm right you idiot and then we're gonna <laughs> like fight about it and then like and then not always fight like they just like go through the process of uh -huh, this wrestle. is right because i'm right because of this and da, 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 and then we like go through this and uh -huh. then we understand that actually oh well like sometimes it's, it's we're both wrong <laughs> yeah exactly also. or like oh you might have a good point there yeah but like it never happens if you if you give up you know that mm -hmm. conversation never takes place. That mm -hmm. that realization who was actually right never takes place because just one gave up it's like ah you know okay mm -hmm. let him have his way or whatever you know but in a way it's it's good to uh, go through the things and and find out something mm -hmm. and, and another way it's really draining is really draining to go mm -hmm. <laughs> like to go 
like through this process of like it takes time and it's training but quite often i want to do then his way and he wants to do my way yeah mm-hmm. like, <laughs> i say mm-hmm. a and he says b and then after we like discuss back and forth say, okay yeah you're right mm-hmm. b is better and it's like no 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 let's do a <laughs> it's like, yeah. i thought you wanted this no i thought you wanted that <laughs> anyway no oh, it's it's it teaches us something we don't know quite exactly what but it teaches us something <laughs> well definitely makes you grow yeah yeah mm-hmm. birdies yeah you mm-hmm. got any advice for people oh uh, hmm. how much battery do you have on the thing <laughs> <laughs> like, like let's give all the advice no we can't mm-hmm. no i mean no, who's but ta- um, who's going to start depends where you, where you start, where you're at, mm-hmm. you know. Do you, have you seen pretty pictures on Instagram and you live mm-hmm. in an apartment that have no idea, you never held a hammer and mm-hmm. you can't decipher a birch from an oak? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe go and volunteer on some farms. Mm-hmm. Um, take a summer and go a week there, two weeks there, uh, or a whole season. Mm-hmm. If you really think, oh, I'm interested in this. Mm-hmm. see what it takes you know you might be thinking oh broilers you know chickens on pasture for meat that's that's good investment that it's good returns and all that um, but it turns out that you don't want to kill 120 chickens in a day mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. it's pretty gruesome and um, yeah it, it needs also a lot of people mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the investment for slaughtery is quite quite up there but um you know uh, you might not want to uh, get up and move fences mm-hmm. or you might love it mm-hmm. you know it's uh, or live in a community or live in a community but don't like the meetings or the mm-hmm. other way around mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah it's uh, i think just try it out mm-hmm. and uh, if you have a group of people that you want to start a community with go and build something Mm-hmm. Like literally anything. Mm-hmm. Go build that swing, that massive swing, Estonian thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> like truly, with building something, um, you'll find out who is the dominant one, who cannot stand any like criticism, who mm-hmm. will take care of the coffee and the cakes, mm-hmm. who loves that, who doesn't love that, you mm-hmm. know, and it's uh, you will get to know each other in a project like that, like a two day three-day mm-hmm. project building something you know uh it's 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 good i mm-hmm. think to start to start yeah. if you have this community mm-hmm. uh naivety uh dream <laughs> 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 no um and um yeah and go volunteer visit these farms work on them and uh just you know pick up the homesteading skills that you mm-hmm. go to you see your gran and ask her how she make those pickles mm-hmm. and uh mm-hmm. and the jams and the mm-hmm. things and um and then at some point just do it mm-hmm. i mean there's no better way of of mm-hmm. learning than diving in and mm-hmm. oh shit my sheep uh, has a uh, lamb stuck now what well mm-hmm. <laughs> you know these mm-hmm. are in the moment things you can't really prepare for it but uh, you just need to do it. Well, you can. It. You can be one of those p- who's prepared for everything. But uh, then probably st- starting a farm takes 10 years of going through courses and mm-hmm. learning all the possibilities of all the things that could go wrong. It's like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah you're wasting your life. Mm-hmm. I think it's like, yeah, Keep live your hands and in the adapt mud. to the situation. And do it when you're young or try as much as possible. Uh, I think when you're like young then you can live with very little you know you can live from a backpack and be really happy you mm-hmm. don't you're not settled in your way so much mm-hmm. you can go left you can right you don't care mm-hmm. uh, i don't need my special shampoo with this and this and this <laughs> temperature water you can maybe just stand under a hose mm-hmm. or or live a summer by swimming in the lake mm-hmm. you know um but when you're young you've got the energy to to do things physically strength uh physical strength and um learning wise maybe more than when you're older uh money is a problem often like i always had this idea of like you know people say oh if you want to live off the land you better start like saving up 
mm -hmm. know, which would mean that I would have to work until I'm 50, 60 mm -hmm. on some probably boring job that I'm mm -hmm. like not invested in and, and, and bored to death. Um, and then, and then what? And then I'm 60 and I'm, mm -hmm. oh, finally have enough money to, to buy mm -hmm. some plots and I have absolutely no skills or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And my energy has gone. Mm -hmm. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's, I don't think that's the way. I think starting small, maybe getting connected to some farmer that has a plot left over, mm -hmm. then maybe you can just, maybe this will not be your final plot mm -hmm. of land that you can live, but maybe you can at least grow food for a summer and you get experience in that. You can get hook up with uh, other people who grow mm -hmm. foods, swap seeds, uh, learn how to preserve your food, uh, mm -hmm. ferment things, you know, and you get the ball rolling and from mm -hmm. there you'll get into more people who know about mm -hmm. other people who are doing the same kind of thing, who know a plot of land or they have the connections to this community that you always wanted. Mm -hmm. um, intentional or not intentional community. Um, yeah, yeah. That, is, that, is, that is also permaculture, just in the way of thinking, right? Yeah, yeah. I guess. I guess so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, there's people that are... Work with what you have, you know. You work with what you have, if you can... Uh, start. And I do think there are loads of... Local. People who have a plot of land that they don't really care yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can graze our neighbor's um, uh, land in autumn. Mm -hmm. We've been doing that in the front and in the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're very happy for that. They like looking at the sheep and, mm -hmm. you know, it's all good. And... I'm sure there are farmers out there or people with a big backyard or whatever. They they are fine with you having a, a plot of uh, um, vegetables growing there or, mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. And maybe mm -hmm. you give them some jam or you work together mm -hmm. a bit, mm -hmm. whatever. There's That's some people who have some... Well, there's like, okay, some old farm places that were like inherited by some city folks so they're like oh, I don't know what to do with it I'll just sell it but there's also people who have worked uh, all their lives in the farm and like brought it up and made it into something and then they're like old and tired and can't mm -hmm. handle it anymore and like and their kids are not interested because they're I don't know do, dealing with IT somewhere in, mm -hmm. in Spain mm -hmm. and um, so what to do with it and there's some people have in even in Estonia now it's it's been thing that People are searching for other young people who are interested to take over, basically. So, like, people are giving away their farms mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just for, like, to find the people who are, like, genuinely interested mm -hmm. and, and to do something with it that's, mm -hmm. you know, to carry on like legacy. minded people mm -hmm. carrying on their stuff, you know. It's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you don't have to get up huge bank loan you know to and to to invest in a project no it's connection start. people mm -hmm. connections mm -hmm. and you only get that by putting yourself out there mm -hmm. and trying to get connected and the universe will help you get connected mm -hmm. <laughs> to the right people mm -hmm. yeah i uh, i do believe that it worked for me mm -hmm. <laughs> here you are here i am <laughs> mm -hmm. uh do you have any uh, any um, I don't know projects or any any ideas you want to broadcast out there like in terms of do you have anything to sell do you have any any input you need do you have any blog you make or any well I do know you have a YouTube channel we have a YouTube channel yeah I haven't had really much time to put new content content up lately mm -hmm. well probably uh, next winter I've take time to <laughs> go through all this video material that i've recorded but i didn't have haven't hadn't had the time to mm -hmm. yeah. uh, montage together but yeah what 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 what, what it's well, called the estonian homestead yeah or Est not the it's estonian homestead. estonian Est in estonian homestead estonian homestead mm -hmm. and uh i think there's one video of like our first year on there which gives a nice overview of sort of what we have here and um, I think there's a video on like how we made the chicken tractor, so our movable chicken coop. And yeah, there's uh, some small videos about and the maybe making the garden bed. and then and, and just some tips on chopping wood or something. But yeah, there's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, but there's a lot of lot of stuff coming mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, about the house, right? And renovating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We we'll basically have a whole footage of how we renovated this house and 
and and all sorts of stuff and about animals and about gardening and we must tell that uh, it's an ecological way we've renovated the house yes mm -hmm. that also didn't make everything easier because mm -hmm. you can go to Espark and buy all the you know chemical shit that you need mm -hmm. in one weekend but um mm -hmm. yeah yeah and natural ways can be well they're obviously healthier mm -hmm. for people and planet but uh uh yeah, so not always the most straightforward. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but all good. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I interrupted. No, it's okay. It's like... Yeah, I don't know. All right, well, then people can hit you up there and... Yeah, there's more stuff to come, but uh, yeah. probably not this summer. I, I don't really feel like doing anything on a computer mm -hmm. when it's summer. Mm -hmm. Do we have other projects that you want people to be interested in? Projects, uh, we'll probably have some projects with them too. We would like to probably get some volunteers to help us plant some trees. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we have to sort of... We're not quite organized yet. Yeah, we're not organized. <laughs> At <laughs> the right. moment. Because we're still in moving uh, phase. Mm -hmm. Moving to the house, getting the house in order. Maybe Kinda. some biologist to check your, uh, check your land. Yeah, that would be good. Universe, send the biologist. <laughs> yeah, yep. be some lab lab uh, people to come and take some soil samples, <laughs> and uh, yeah, do some tests. Like lab tests would be awesome, because yeah. we did the first soil tests and things when we came here before we bought this. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, we did some soil tests to see what's going on, and uh, yeah, that's uh, if you want to know about things in the soil, you're paying for it. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of things to look at, so you're paying a lot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if but they don't tell you about the count of nematodes or, you know, all the yeah, that's that's the, different. The soil life, yeah. which is the, actually the most important part. Yeah, because mm -hmm. the theory actually is that all the nutrients are available in the soil, basically mm -hmm. always. It's just whether the biology, the micro biome, is is present. Mm -hmm in order for them to uh, make those nutrients available to mm -hmm. the plants. Mm -hmm. So so basically you always have what you need. Mm -hmm. You just need the right bacteria and mm -hmm. fungi and all the other creepy crawlies uh, to, to make them uh, available. Mm -hmm. So the soil test should be about, do you have your creepy crawlies? Not, do you have your phosphor? Mm -hmm. Do you have your nitrogen? Mm -hmm. You have that. Mm -hmm. If it, whether it's available or not is in the in the in the life in your mm -hmm. soil life, and that's why our chemical egg is on chemicals mm -hmm. because they've destroyed it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have your your lifelines to help you uh, get your groceries in, then you need to oh, wow. have the <laughs> you live on fast food, and that's mm -hmm. what exactly what it is. Oh. But that's a whole oh. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> we can start another we could two start hours. another episode yeah. now. <laughs> oh, best, yeah. But one of the really th very simple things that we saw when we came here all now the experience that we like i didn't know about this and like talking about dandelions uh way little right mm -hmm. so like everybody has it everybody wants to get rid of it so many of it so much of it we didn't have any dandelions on this mm -hmm. i was scratching my head it's like i've never seen a, mm -hmm. a garden without dandelions everywhere and there was nothing when we came here but it was like no one really lived here for years then Mm -hmm. And uh, the the soil, was, uh, what I've learned through this is, is also that dandelion has has the capability of sort of uh, loosened soil or something. So it also uh, comes when the soil is too compacted. It, it's it's there, but it's just mm -hmm. not doing it when it's not needed or something. I don't know about that. I ask Ave. But the, what I saw was no dandelions. Mm -hmm. And then after one year... There's more dandelions, and now there's a lot of dandelions, and they're specifically in the places where we walk, and they're specifically in the places where our animals walk and trample, mm -hmm. and uh, the soil is compacted. So, mm -hmm. this very like uh, simple example of it's there, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's it's not like doing it because either the conditions aren't right for it, or it's like you know it's not needed. So, mm -hmm. it's a niche. Yeah, it's a niche. Yeah. So the dandelion, basically there's seeds of all kinds of plants and things in the soil, which is slightly different from what I was referring to before, the yeah, yeah, yeah. microorganism. Yeah. This is about seeds. But if the niche is available, like a task, mm -hmm. 
the mm-hmm. task mm-hmm. of the plant and it's the right conditions, it will start doing that task. It feels, oh, it's compacted here. I can do something about that with my mm-hmm. deep pen root. This is strong root. That That's why you have a so hard time getting it out sometimes, mm-hmm. right? It's this deep root and it's doing you uh, a favor mm-hmm. because it's helping you getting your soil uh, decompacted so other plants again mm-hmm. can root there, mm-hmm. right? So um, by trying to get it all out, you're like, um, it's the, the, the next seed will think, oh, it's compacted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let mm-hmm. me help mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. decompact your soul. And you're like, oh, another root, another dandelion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> More yeah. work. Well, so if you understand stick- that they're decompacting and they're doing you a favor and they will disappear mm-hmm. when, when the job is done, mm-hmm. then you might not be so eager to get them all out. Mm-hmm. Or you might mm-hmm. uh, interest yourself in uh, dandelion coffee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, liquor. Yeah, you well, know, you can do a lot of things. What, you, you can, what can you do with it? You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you have grazing animals, they will love that. Oh, they love it. And uh, and yeah, just take the root and make some tea. Mm-hmm. It's very good for you. Uh, yeah, we're okay. We're getting out of <laughs> all topics. <laughs> please stop the recording. <laughs> stop! Please stop. <laughs> we're really hard to close. Please mm-hmm. don't. <laughs> I feel like we can do at least uh, three other ones <laughs> to get this all covered. Well, uh, thank you on my part uh, for introducing me to this lovely place. And I'm happy you have pulled through these two years. I hope this will get easier now that you have a place to live and and do great shit around here. It's really cool. What kind of shit was that? There's <laughs> <laughs> always great shit lying around everywhere. <laughs> Pick it up, (laughs) put it in the right place, things will grow. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Well, until the next time.